Welcome back to Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. This is episode 17 in the Carl Goldberg Ultimate 10-300 biplane build series. And in this episode, as promised, we are going to start to build the fuselage. But first we need to address the firewall that came in the kit. And I'll bring you off the tripod and show you what I have to deal with and what I'm going to do. But first, if you'd like to this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of future episodes of this build series. And also like and share my videos. I'd really appreciate that. It might help somebody out. So anyway, I'll bring you in and show you what I got. So before I get going on this fuselage build, uh, I have this old dried out brittle uh, firewall that I'm not going to be using. I have to, I think it's been wet too at one point because it really feels like the plywood separating. But I went and extrapolated because this kit engine mount is for, uh, I don't know if I can see it, but it's got dash lines right there. Those are for the uh, kit engine mount. But I'm using this massive Enya R124 cycle. So I had to extrapolate all those lines onto the piece of paper that I'm going to uh, spray mount onto fresh plywood. I'll epoxy two of them together and uh, I'll cut it both at the same time so they'll be exactly the same size and uh but this will be the setup i got it centered where it needs to be and it's also centered on the line you know with the uh with the engine center line so that's what it's going to be and uh there's my pattern i'm going to frame out it onto my plywood break out the jigsaw and cut her out but uh, it'll be a lot better than using this crap. This is really bad. And these lightning holes, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, not going to put them in because that's for the stock engine mount. As you can see with this one, it definitely ain't going to line up very well. So I'm going to put make that solid. Have to cut out these two little things. So what I'm going to do is cut these two things out and then glue it together and then uh, then cut out the main deal. So we'll get set up and do that. Okay, so now I got my notches cut. Now I'm going to epoxy these two together and weight them with uh, some heavy weights, you know, something like that. Let that set until it cures. Then I'm going to take my pattern, 
spray mount adhesive on the back side and put it on there and we will get this cut out leaving the line a little bit so that I can have something to sand to but that way it'll be a perfect alignment and I'll extrapolate these lines back on the wood once I get this cut so first things first we're gonna mix up some epoxy and get these glued together So I just got some 30 minute epoxy here. Just eyeball it. Should be more than enough. By epoxying these things beforehand, I won't have any epoxy to uh, sand later because it'll be a nice wood edge. Wish I had a brush to paint these on, but I don't. Dumb shit. I just put the epoxy on the wrong side. that set up for a little while and then we'll come back and do our deal.
I don't want a lot of epoxy built up there yet. That's where the tank tray goes in. Feel a lot better about doing this than uh, using the the kit one because it I didn't feel good about that. So here's the before, as you can see, it's really almost feels like cardboard. And here's the after. Perfectly flat. I already got my blind nuts installed. And uh, in order to get your blind nuts installed perfectly, I like to use that good tool. That's the uh, centering uh, centering drill. I think Great Plains used to make these. I'm not sure if they still make them or not. Who knows? Maybe Dubro will start making it. But that thing is awesome for you know centering up your holes. So I used that. I got my throttle linkage hole and my fuel inlet. It doesn't have a vent. I'm not going to use a vent to the muffler, uh, mainly because my Enya has a geared pump, fuel pump, so I don't have to worry about that. I will vent it, though. I'll vent the tank because I don't want it to suck itself, you know, collapse itself. So anyway, hard part's over. Now I'm going to spend a little bit of time. I'm going to get all my fuselage parts cut out lightly sand the edges and uh, get everything ready and after I'm done with that I'll be back to start the fuselage bill so we already done that part done with that done with that done with that and that so we'll go to this right here now as you can see here this is where you uh, attach the cabanes on the top of the fuse. I'm going to be using carbon fiber strip that's going to stretch from former to former. And uh, I'm going to drill through that and mount the uh, cabanes to the carbon fiber strip underneath this. So uh, underneath the top platform. So that way, there is no way that uh, wing's going to pull through the top of the fuselage. That's going to strengthen that up tremendously. You'd have to pull the whole, whole top deck off before that will happen. So anyway, we'll get set up. I'll get my parts cut out, and we will start right here as soon as I get back. Okay, before I go any further, I wanted to show, I like to keep my cockpit floor in. I need the weight back behind the, uh, the CG anyway, so that will be glued in place, sanded smooth. And also, this will be glued in place and sanded smooth. Uh, the reason I need all that weight is that Enya engine is very heavy, and I want, I need, I'm going to need tail weight. So my uh, elevator servo going to be mounted back here, uh, and the battery and the receiver is going to be mounted under the cockpit. That's the way I set it up the last time I, I built one of these things with this big Enya, and it balanced perfectly. So uh, that's the way I'm going to do it now. So we'll see how it goes. 
So right now I'm going to glue that in. Okay, I've got all of the parts for the fuselage cut out, sanded. See, there's the uh, cockpit back plate. I got it sanded smooth. All my formers and everything are ready to go. Now, the first step in the plan is to drill these holes in the top plate. So, like I said earlier, I'm going to drill those holes, but I'm also going to epoxy that carbon fiber strip from here to here. So it'll basically be covering those holes, like about that. They'll be epoxied on, and the hole will go through there. The nut on, it will be on the back side. This side here is going to be the bottom. I'm going to flip this because this cockpit's a little smoother on this side than that side. So I'll just flip it like that and uh, we'll get those drilled out. So before I drill this 332nd hole, because I want this to be the top, I'm going to go ahead and drill a pilot hole where these go. And I'm going to go ahead and glue these, <coughs> or epoxy them on ahead of time. That way I'm drilling through that at the same time the hole will be lined up. Because if I wait and do it after, afterwards and I go to drill down through there, the drill bit could drift on there and make a bigger hole than I need. So I'm going to do it this way. If it don't work out, it don't work out. I'll figure something out. I use this centering thing for everything. It makes a perfect hole for your uh, control horns as well when you want to mount them to your control surfaces. And I also changed the length of these. I figured that's that's about the size I made them the last time. So I'm going to get these lined up. Let's see. These are a quarter inch, so I'm going to make a line to help me line up. That's the line I want. <laughs> Good thing this is the bottom. So I will epoxy that evenly spaced an inch on either side of that. We'll epoxy these on and clamp them. I'm going to rough up this one side so it has something to grip on. We'll get these epoxied and clamped flat. Okay, that's right, that time. And that'll be my uh, my reinforcement. That's all I do. And I've never had a wing pull out of the fuselage. And uh, I'm doing, the reason I cut them short, I'm trying to save weight because that engine requires everything to be mounted near the tail. It's just so heavy. So I'll get these drilled out. and Well, no, I'm going to clamp these first. We'll mix up some epoxy, roughen these up, and clamp those. Let's see. We'll use 80. I hate using carbon fiber because it's dirty. Uh, 
I'm just over here running some 80 grit on it in a crisscross pattern to give it something to grip onto, the epoxy. I need to get me some of those epoxy brushes. Cheaper to throw away those than a regular paintbrush. I'm going to end up epoxy in my uh, <laughs> part to my plan. These things that came in real handy.
All right, we'll leave that clamped up and then we will drill those out. Well, but there's uh, <laughs> what I had set up. I didn't realize I wasn't aiming at the where I was working. Of course, I did move it. But uh, there it is, weighted and, and uh, weighted flat. And whenever that's cured, we will get back to uh, building. We set that aside after it's drilled. And we go on to uh, putting the firewall on. We're getting, you know, the fuselage all set up. See you in a bit. Okay, so what we got here is quarter inch by sixteenth inch carbon fiber strip that I went ahead and drilled through three thirty second. They're epoxied on, and this is just a uh, little bit of insurance. You know. I know a lot of guys out there think that the wing's gonna fly out, it's gonna pull the cabanes off. And, and I do that just to make myself feel better. Probably don't need it, but it never hurts. And it don't weigh but a half a gram, I don't know. So anyway, we're done with that. So it says set that aside and we will move on to making our formers. Okay, the next step is to to uh, glue on one eighth by half inch balsa doublers to formers B, C, D, and E, which I've already lightly sanded the perimeters and kind of uh, chamfered the edges a little bit just to kind of smooth them out. So we will get set up and uh, glue these on. Basically, you know, the top and bottom of each one. And that'll be that. That'll prep the uh, formers. Then we got to trim this bottom edge of this one, former B. So I'll be using medium CA. And I'll, I think I'll trim a, or make a fresh end on that. Basically going to sand that flat and square. So we'll start with the biggest one first, which is this one. And I'm just going to glue it on and then trim it off the end. I think what I might do so I don't put excess glue on there to draw a little line there. Good. 
And I will glue this up here. That's B. These uh, fuselages go together really quick. If I wasn't filming, this plane would already be flying. But I want to document all my builds. Go ahead and do this one. After I install them, I, I go ahead and sand them flush to the end and flush to the top and bottom if, the, if you get it like a little bit over.
One more. All right, there's the former. Okay, the next step is to glue the fuselage doublers and triplers in place. I've already sorted to make sure I have the right ones on the right sides. It shows it in the plans or in the instructions, you know, uh, as far as where the landing gear slot goes, you want to make sure that's in the right position on whatever side you're gluing on, which I have that set up. So what we're doing here is we are just lining it up with the back. This tail end goes to that slot here and it just follows the airfoil. Now what we're going to do I'm going to get a scrap piece of eight and that'll look like you, you can use it as a guide which I think your eye would be probably better You just want to make sure that it, this tail end is flush with that slot and it's following the airfoil all the way and you want to make sure that this here is an eighth and this is an eighth and what I like to do is I like to go ahead and uh, mark with a pen the outline so that I have a idea where to line it back up to as far as you know gluing you know where to put the glue so we will get find my pen and we'll do that always double check your slash I do this so that I know where to put the glue and I don't glue into areas that need to have something else glued there like those landing gear or the wing mounting plates or uh, blocks. Or the landing gear you don't want 
They have a big glue fill it up in there. So that's that one. Do the same thing with this one. Just take your time. There's no big rush to get this right. I remember one time I had, I, it was, I think it was on my extra 300, I glued these on wrong and I had to rip them off and make new doublers. So uh, that's why I always like to be careful, make sure I have that set up just right. Okay. All right, now let's get ready to glue. I'm gonna use medium CA. Probably don't need to wait too long with that. Next step is to do the triplers the same way. You probably glued enough. You ain't getting them off there, I guarantee it. Looks good. Now make sure you get the right doubler or tripler. That, see the how that slots in the middle? I'm going to make sure that slots in the middle. See how this slots forward? 
make sure it goes forward where it's supposed to be. So we'll line these up with that slot. I'm not worried about this top edge here. I'm more worried about where the block goes in and this slot here. This one I don't have to outline because it only goes on one way. Just be careful. Okay. Looks like it has good alignment. It is perfect. All right, now, next step, we're going to sandwich these together like this and tape the tail together. Okay, so now we're going to line up the fuselage. And tape this tail together. Make sure your doublers and triplers are facing the inside. Start installing formers. So I need former B. And these uh, the balsa doubler goes forward. I'm going to need a flat area. It says hold in place with a rubber band. When you fly uh, planes with wings that rubber band on, you tend to grab a gross of them at Staples or office supply stores, any, any office supply store will sell. So we'll just stretch this out over that. Okay. 
and then we just work our way back to form a C, D, and E, use rubber bands to secure each. This is C. Might need to call my helper. <laughs> D. Now, this is just a dry fit. It may need to come back apart to, uh, you know, sand out a slot. So they fit just right. So, you know, be prepared for that kind of thing. So far, it looks like a banana. But that'll all straighten out once we get the uh, top and bottom in. And D. Now you got to keep in mind on D, you don't want to install it upside down. If you do, your slots won't be lined up. So you keep an eye on how you're putting that in there. Yeah, it's straightened right up. Starting to look like something. Okay. Slide the fuse slides top under the rubber bands and press into position. Loosen the tape at the rudder post end to allow the top to fit. We'll do that. Now, because I put these strips in here, I'm going to have to chamfer or allow for that up here where they cross. So I'll mark those, mark those right now so I can fix that. I've only got to do it on this first former. It's just in that balsa wood area. I just got to relieve it a sixteenth of an inch. We'll see how it fits once I get it. Might have to relieve it some more. We'll see. Now my top tail piece broke off so I'm gonna have to glue that in once this thing gets fitted
Here's where you take that tape off. That <laughs> that was perfect. Awesome. Here's where you usually have alignment issues. You'll have gaps and stuff back here. And here's where that one piece goes, right in here. I'm gonna have to sand it up and fix it in there just right. old wood it's like brown until you sand it then it turns white again I think I'll uh, I'll wait to fit that permanently. Sucks that that broke. Flip the fuselage over and sew the bottom. What I'm doing is moving the uh, rubber bands out of that slot where the plywood bottom has to go. Well, it fits really nice. All right, now we got to position it over the uh, top view and see if it lines up. And that's when we start taping it up. Of course, this back end is going to have to be taped because it's not uh, going to be perfect. The rudder post that goes down inside the fuselage is 3 16 So what I got here is a scrap piece of 3 16 and I'm going to put in there and tape in there tight
it'll help keep that gap from closing up when I glue it. And you want to make sure I can cut some more of that off. I don't want it to get glued in. So I just, I just need it big enough to make that gap. What I'm doing is lining up over the plant. As you can see here, I got a gap. And that's just because it was a bad die cut. And while you do this, you want to check for 90. Right now, you know, the former fell out. No wonder it was 90. <laughs> Check my formers again. Okay, it's still 90. But you want to check for 90. And as I do that, I'm going to be taping it together. Especially down here on the tail, you want to make sure that that is exactly 90. As always, everything's in the way. Always check every time you make a tape. What I need to do is redo these because they're making it twist a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing, I moved the camera over. So I'm going to get set up to tape that tail together again. So I want to have that square up against it. That 3 16 is not going to get glued in. It's just there for a guide. I have my 90 pressed up hard against that. That should. Yes. There's my 90. 
So this tail now is perfectly 90 degrees. So now we'll work our way this way, taping it together. Because no matter what I do, even if I squeeze that together, that's going to stay 90 degrees because it's locked in right there. So the first thing, I'm gonna, I think I'll tape it right here. And I pull on the tape as I do this because when you pull on that tape, it'll it'll kind of help squeeze it together. I'm gonna add another one here to pull down on it. Still ninety. All right, we're gonna work our way this way. All right, so now that we've established our 90, I'm going to start taping this up. That tail is the most important part. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to go back and recheck. And once I establish 90 on one side, I'm going to go and tape the other side. And we'll, and we'll flip it over and do the same thing to the top. Don't forget you also have to keep checking for straightness. Okay. These rubber bands don't help much either, especially if they're not set just perfectly. Still 90. Once I get everything square, I'm going to go through and, and uh, reinforcement tape everything. Okay, that's the bottom. Then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the top. So I want to make sure my rubber bands are square.
I like to have a piece of tape ready to clamp down. Just got two more to do. What's up here? So now as you can see you can still do some sideways movement with this so the way you stop that is to tape the former on the inside matter of fact I can get rid of these rubber bands now because they're just gonna get in the way turn this back over Check for straightness. That's straight. Looks really good. So let's double check your tail post. Looks good.
Piece of tape on this side just to lock it in. It is square. I checked it. Plus, it's kind of bowed right there. So I want to make sure that there's no bow. Okay, so I need to put. Some tape here. I'm happy with the way that's turned out. So now you side check your fuselage to ensure against twist. So it looks straight. No twists in the tail. And basically this is how I have it taped up. Boy, my lighting sucks. And then the top's the same way. All right. This rubber band. All right, we'll get set up for the next step, which is to put the firewall on. Okay, the plans state to glue all of the uh, formers on, top and bottom, before gluing the firewall on, but I don't like that idea. I'm going to tape the firewall on now, glue it at the same time. It fits with no uh, issue. I mean, I could do what they say and glue it like that, but. It fits fine. You don't even need to tape it, but I want to make sure that it's on there right. So I'm going to tape it into position. Want to make sure your blind nuts are to the inside. Gotta get a new piece of tape. Probably got some dust on there. Now, what else I'm going to do is there's areas that there's a gap. So I'm going to go ahead and tape everywhere there's a gap along the edge. That'll help with pulling in any seam. Sometimes it requires a lot of tape, but that's fine. It's worth it in the end because you have a better seam.
I'm going to put a piece of tape across here to squeeze in the former. do that same trick for the top. Make sure that top is flush with the top. I like to glue in that floor because it just it looks nicer than having a gaping, you know, open hole in your fuselage. Especially if you're gonna put a pilot in it, you kind of need to do that anyway. I got a, uh, a Williams Brothers pilot to put in there, kind of like a vintage. I mean, he's not a vintage looking pilot, it's a sport pilot, but it'll look neat in there. It'll look old school, which is what I like. I like old school planes. All this prep work is just going to make for a better, better looking finished glue joint. You won't have glue pouring out every gape, gaping gap you have. There isn't really any gas, but this wood is old and warped, so it kind of helps to close up the, the uh, seams. You know, you can see you can all that movement. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. All that movement will cause glue to come through, so I'm gonna close it up.
still straight. Actually, what I could do here, stretch it all the way across. What I'm doing is making sure that this, because this is the, the place where your horizontal stab is going to set. You want to make sure that it is perfectly square and flush. And preferably level. Look at this. The load is going to help, Danny. Very dang close. So right here is that gap that I was saying. It was just it's just bad uh, bad die cut. So I'm gonna try to cut like wedges and just kind of put them in there just to close that gap up as much as I can. I mean it's not gonna be perfect, but it'll be better than nothing. I don't like having that unsupported so I'm just going to kind of eyeball just wedges You don't want to force it in there either because it'll cause your fuselage side to bulge. This is not going to be perfect, but I'm trying to close it up as much as I can. gonna have a plywood you can try to cut plywood and it <clears throat> just separates on you
I'm gonna let it stand proud on that. That'll be good enough for what I'm gonna be doing with it. It gets covered up with the uh, stabilizer anyway. There. Or no, it don't. This is the bottom. It'll be fine. Okay. I'm going to double check square on the tail post one more time and then we're going to start gluing. And I'll give you some tips on gluing these box fuselages because they can really be messy if you don't do it the right way. Okay, now that we're all square and straight and true, all of our seams are taped and ready to uh, glue up. Now, there's one way of doing this that I've found the best way, and it's less messy. So what I do is you, you got a choice. You can either do the tops and bottoms first, or you can do the formers first. But what I like to do is the top and bottom. Basically, you glue all the seams along the bottom, inside, and the top inside. That way you don't have glue oozing. Now if you were to try to do the top and bottom and all the formers at the same time, you'd have glue oozing into corners and stuff, but I like to let my glue dry horizontally. Because if you were to run your bead down here, let's say, and then you turn your fuselage up like this, and start gluing your formers. All that glue that you just put on is working its way down, weakening the glue seam up up close to the former. So I'm going to start with the formers, and I'm going to glue them. As you can see right now, I need to tape that down. There's a bow there, but I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> glue all these the bottom, top and bottom. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm just going to start the glue process and then I'm going to put it in fast speed to glue the rest of it. I'm going to start up here by the firewall. I'm going to be running out of glue here. I'm going to have to go get another bottle. But you just put a nice bead all along those edges. And I like to let them dry pretty good before I go on to the next one. As you can see, I'm just going I'm just doing the top right now. Sometimes you might have to move some tape out of the way. <clears throat> Basically, that's all we're doing. So I'll put you in fast speed and we'll get this thing glued up. like the gap that I had on the formers so I put some 3 16 tri-stock in there with an added glue fillet 
so that uh, I can maintain my flat top and bottom. I'm going to have to do the same thing to the last form, I believe that's E, 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 or whatever it is, E, I think. Just going to put a little tri-stock in the middle, not tri-stock, but that uh, 3 16 square, just to reinforce the, that side. And it could, But the rest of the sides, they look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with those. Side up there looks good too. But uh, once we get all the glue, once we get all the glue done, we got to put the tri stock in the firewall area. Uh, I'm going to replace the kit tri stock because it's really, uh, I mean, it's lightweight, which is good, but I don't know, for something to have to endure the vibrations of that big honking in your R120, I think I want to put some heavier stuff in there. I think I got some like six pound wood tri stock, so I'll, I'll be using that. So anyway, we'll let this dry up a little bit, then I'll glue up the sides and we will continue on. Looking like we're going to be a two part fuselage build. This one's already over an hour and a half. So I have all my formers glued, top and bottom. Now I'm going to set up and, like I said, I'm not going to use this tri stock. I'm, I got this nicer piece I'm going to use for inside here. So I'll get set up and we'll glue those on and I think that's going to be it for this episode because I'm Pretty much almost two hours. So here we go. So basically, I'm going to do these sides first. So we'll just measure. I'll just do two equals. These will get glued in on either side here and what I'm going to do because I have a glue fillet I'm going to chamfer the edges just a little that way it'll glue in there real nice
goop here because that bottom plate goes in there. And right now, I'm going to measure for that. So, by eye, roughly right there. I'm going to make it go the whole way across because it. Uh, needs to putting a little chamfer in the on the corner because it's going to set up against that glue fillet or fillet i don't know why i keep saying fillet anyway we'll get this glued in Might go through and reinforce some glue joints. All I'm doing now is reinforcing these glue joints up top here. Well, you know. Warmers. Okay, so we we're at a step now. We're going to put this bottom piece in. It's the bottom front of the, where the tank gets installed. But before I install this, I'm going to take some thin epoxy resin and paint the inside of the tank area, up or on the top deck, inside the firewall, the firewall, and everything. I'm going to paint that all with some thin resin to fuel proof it. Before I glue this piece on, I'm also going to fuel proof the inside so that when we glue everything together, it'll, uh, it'll all be fuel proof in there because I won't be able to get to all the little nooks and crannies with the, uh, all those pieces put together. Then when I put that top sheeting, I'll, I should be able to get to most of that from the inside. I, I know that won't be, be able to get to all of it, but it'll be good enough. Unless I'm flying upside down all the time. I, I don't, won't be doing that. So, Anyway, we'll get to set up. I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. And we'll get set up and do this. So I'm just going to use some 30-minute uh, epoxy. Thin it out 50%. So I'll do like 10 grams, 10 grams, 20 grams of denatured alcohol. And like I said, I'll paint the inside of this. The top deck about I'll probably go back as far as this section here let's do that whole top and then on the bottom I'll do all the inside underneath you know and but probably both sides of this former I got my canopy there just to see what it's gonna look like can't wait to get this thing done and I went with a one-fifth scale Williams Brothers pilot for it that's what I'm gonna put in it Kind of old school, kind of, you know, I know it's kind of cheesy looking, but it'll be good enough and at least there'll be a pilot in it. So let's get set up. We'll get this epoxy painted on here and put this piece on. And I'm calling this a video because I'm probably going to be over two hours. All right, let's get going. Okay, there's a slight change of plan. I think what I'm going to do, hold on a second. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint thin epoxy in the top area here. Then I'm going to glue this on. And the reason I'm doing that that way, it goes on like this. The reason I'm going to do it that way is I'm afraid that once I paint this 
once I paint this inside, it's going to warp it. And if I, and if I have epoxy all the way up here, I'm not going to be able to use CA to glue it on because it won't penetrate the wood. It, there'll be an epoxy film there. So let's just start with the inside upper half. What I can't get to with, with, with this on. So we'll do that. And then when I flip it over, I got all this area in here I can get to. So that's what we'll do. We'll start with this. I'll mix up a small batch to do that. Okay, so what I want to do first, I want a dedicated cup for denatured alcohol to clean the brush afterwards. I'll set that up here. So we will tear the... I'll go to grams. <clears throat> I'm going to go 10, 10, 20 just to give me We'll go 12, 12, 24. Close enough. Close enough for government work, as Dad always used to say. Okay, I got my uh, bottom fuselage below the uh, firewall glued on. I gotta let that cure up before I can epoxy that. Eh, I dang spilled my thinned epoxy. Luckily I was done using it. But now my plan is probably gonna get glued to the table. Or glued together. Maybe not. We'll see. Anyway. When this gets cured up, I'll be back and we will uh, continue doing the epoxy. inside just past that former where the fuel tank's going to be and firewall that's all done next step is to glue in the landing gear and uh, 
and the uh, wing hold down. Probably could get that epoxied in. So I might do that now and then call it a video. But we'll get set up. So we got the landing gear block and we want to make sure that when we put when we put this in that we can get our landing gear in there. So if it goes in like this, I need to take just a little bit off here so that I can get my landing gear into that slot. So we'll use my primer grid over here to do that. checking it till it just falls right in still a tight fit getting close. That's in. Let me get the landing gear and see if I can get her to seat in there. And we can always make adjustments. So now that we know that the landing gear goes in, we got a good flush fit. We can go ahead and get ready to epoxy that in. But first, I'm going to move over here. 
and get these later in the year or the wing mounting bolts that play in. They go in basically like this. Any kind of luck, we won't need to. Oh, good. They just slide right in there. That's sweet. So we'll epoxy those in as well. Just like that. All right, let's get this landing gear back out. Come on. There we go. All right, we will start with the landing gear blocks and just work our way this way. So I'm just going to eyeball the uh, epoxy, apply it with the stick. Should be plenty. Hope everybody's enjoying this video series. I know I could have had this plane done if I wouldn't have done the lost foam wings, but that's just something I wanted to try out. So future builds won't have any more lost foam in them as far as kits. Okay. As I do this, I want to make sure that I don't fill that hole with epoxy. Well, you know, the slot that the landing gear is going to fit in. Because that might be a little bit uh, counterproductive. So I'll be cleaning that hole out as I go. Put the gear in. Just to keep it spaced out perfectly. Here's where you want to be careful. You don't glue the gear in. What's probably going to happen, maybe, I can't remember, it's been a long time since I've built one of these things, but I might have to like carve out this little area for the, when the wing goes on, just so that uh, it doesn't damage the wing right there. So, but I'm not sure, it might, it might not even come into contact there, but we'll find out later. So now that I got it lined up, I'm going to take the gear out. I don't want to take a chance on it getting glued in. I'm going to 
go to the other side. And I'm going to put a little fillet inside here. I might mix up some more for for the uh, wing hold down bolts. Never had any issues with landing gear busting out, and I'm going way overboard here with the uh, epoxy. Probably adding weight to the front, and I need to <laughs> take weight away with a two pound engine. Not really good, it's kind of counterproductive for trying to save weight. Put down some wax paper just in case I have some goop. All right, I like the way that looks. I'll bring you around and show you what it looks like before we do the wing because I'm going to have to uh, mix up a bunch. Here's what it looks like on the inside. Glue fillet or fillet. Why do I keep saying fillet? I must be hungry for steak. But then you got the uh, landing gear block mounted. That should be it. So we'll get set up and and do this wing hold down blocks. These get mounted in, you know, you can see the shape. Just like that. Same with the rear one. So that's how we'll mount them. When you mount those those holes, well, if you follow the uh, the shape of the block, you can't really mess it up. It only goes in one way. If you put it in backwards, you'll be able to tell. Just double checking it. That's how we'll glue them.
you know when I built the, my other ones I don't remember if I used epoxy on this or just thick CA they, they were, for a while I was just using CA for everything even the firewalls I never had any issues but I've got to, into the habit of using epoxy because of my P40 build I used a lot of epoxy in that one I will put these in and I'll put a little bit of a epoxy in here just to make like a fillet Anybody that's ever used epoxy before knows that it is a sticky mess. Turn it over real quick just to clean up. I'm going to add a little bit more here. I put down that wax paper because I'm getting that stuff everywhere. I like to use denatured alcohol to uh, get the excess epoxy off my hands. What do you guys use? Acetone or, or what do you guys use to get the epoxy off of your hands? Leave it down in the comments. I'd be interested to know. Okay, I'm going to let this set and cure up. And we can call this done. this video that is just trying to clean up the glops double check here Looks good. And there's the glue fillets. 
for the uh, wing hole downs. Same for the other side. I don't want to, I don't want to, oops, sorry. I don't want to try to flip the plane off the land. You get the idea. It's all done. I'm going to clean up that little mess there for a little bit and then we'll be done. Okay, we'll call this part one of the fuselage build. I didn't really want to go to two hours, but I had to get something done to make it look like there's something done. And I know I probably took way longer than I normally would have, but I'm filming it, so I didn't want to miss anything that somebody might need to see. So I just included all of it. I didn't cut out hardly any. I just edited the blank stuff out of it. But uh, I think we're in a good spot now. Next episode, we'll be mounting the wings. Going to mount both the lost foam wing and the uh, kit wing. Lost foam wing, I'm going to have to like notch in the center section of the wing about a quarter of an inch because they're, they're about a quarter of an inch wider. Because the, tra <coughs> the trailing edge on the lost foam wing goes to a really fine taper. And I didn't want to cut that out. I think that would be added wing area, basically. So we'll, uh, we'll do that on the next episode. And uh, I'm happy with the way it's turning out so far. The firewall looks great. Can't wait to get that engine mounted on there to see what that looks like. Get the landing gear mounted probably do a temporary mount of the landing gear just to see you know how it looks can't do the tail wheel of course yet but uh, but it's coming along and uh, hopefully you guys are liking the way it's coming out or turning out it'll be done before you know it and then I'm going on to the next build as soon as this thing's done and covered I'll be starting the next build uh, normally I just do one airplane in the winter, but I'm anxious to get this next one going. So stay tuned for what that one's going to be. I think you'll be happy with what I picked. So anyway, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel, hit that notification bell, and be sure to like and share my videos. I really appreciate that. Uh, I know I've expressed it previously but I'm not going to monetize my channel I, I don't care how many subscribers I get I just like to see the count I don't I don't and until I get like a million subscribers I'm not going to monetize my channel because it doesn't make sense so I'm just gonna leave it be and uh, just let it grow so the contents free I'm paying for everything out of my pocket kits parts whatever so there's nothing uh, that anybody has to pay for in my builds. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, but I think uh, I'm basically doing this for myself, basically. Just, just uh, you know, documenting my builds and, you know, trying to help the new guy out, you know. I You know, I'm not into self-promotion. I mean, I, I like to show my talent to the new people so they can have the confidence enough to want to try it because to build an airplane by yourself and to see it take off on its maiden journey it's a really a real adrenaline rush for me anyway but it's really it's it's really fun the first time i did this for the first airplane i ever built when I saw that fly, I was shaking like a leaf. It was, my adrenaline was flowing, and uh, it was really exciting. And you know, you get hooked when you see something that you built fly. It's just, it's just an amazing thing. So, anyway, that's enough babbling. So until the next episode, part two of the fuselage build. Thanks for watching.